Hello everybody, Aaron Dolan here. Today we're going to explore a nearly lost technology, and that is the germanium power transistor amplifier stage, as featured in electronics from the late 60s. Here's the date code for that TO3 style germanium transistor. You can see it was manufactured in 1966. I said nearly lost because there's not many of these old console stereos left. This particular one was manufactured by Sylvania back in the time when you bought stereo components from the furniture store. Here you can see that it's only $495 in 1967 dollars. With inflation, this particular unit has a value, or would have a value, of approximately $5,400. When I purchased this unit, it came with a schematic you see here. We'll focus in on the power amplification stage. This slide's a bit busy, but it will allow us to view the individual components. Do keep in mind that this is a stereo amplifier. I'm only going to focus in on one channel. Here are the output transistors. These are germanium devices in a TO3 case. You can see them right here mounted on this large heat sink. The input is transformer coupled. That's T1 right here. Physically, this is one of the transformers here. Again, one for left, one for right. The output is capacitively coupled. See this 1000 microfarad 30 volt capacitor? which is seen right here. Again, transformer coupled input, capacitor coupled output. The speaker would appear right here going to ground. At this point, I'd like to draw your attention to this biasing network, which consists of this 2.7 ohm resistor, the 390, again, 2.7 and 390. Physically, those appear here. Here's your 2.7, and I think you can just make out 390 ohms here. Let's redraw the schematic to better understand the power amplifier. All right, this is the simplified schematic. We have a transformer coupled input and a capacitive coupled output. It's a push-pull stage. Assume this is Q1, assume this is Q2, and the way it works is that on the positive half cycle, Q1 will activate, and on the negative half cycle, Q2 will operate. This section here is a biasing network that sets up Q1 and Q2 so that they are just in conduction. You recall that's necessary to prevent crossover distortion. We can calculate the resistance for this string. That works out to be about 700 and 85 ohms. Knowing that there's a 58 volt supply, we can calculate this current flowing as about 75 milliamps. This has some interesting implications. The first thing you'll notice is that if you run the calculations, this resistor bias network is going to consume about 4.3 watts. So we'll call that P bias. The other thing to notice is the voltage drop across this 2.7 ohm resistor. Using Ohm's law and knowing that there's 75 milliamps, we can calculate that there's a 0.2 volt drop relative to this 58. As a first approximation, if we ignore the base current, then we can state that the voltage right here on this base transistor will be 58 volts minus 0.2. Another way to look at that is to say we install a voltmeter and we measure the voltage from here to here. We would see that it's a 0 0.2 volt drop. For those of you who've played with transistors before, that number doesn't seem right, does it? And here's why. If we're dealing with germanium transistors, it only takes a 0 0.2 volt drop. Whereas with silicon, you might expect a 0 0.7 volt drop for a power transistor. Another way of saying that is if one of these transistors died, you could not 
you could not put a silicon transistor in its place because the biasing would be all wrong. There'd be a lot of crossover distortion because the silicon transistor with its 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 base to emitter voltage drop is nowhere near what the germanium is. So essentially the germanium transistor in this circuit is just turned on whereas the silicon wouldn't even be close. As far as biasing of Q1 is concerned, you'll notice this small emitter resistor here. This provides a feedback mechanism because as Q1 conducts more, there will be a larger voltage drop across this resistor, which will tend to turn Q1 off. So you could say there's a little bit of equilibrium there. And of course, the same thing is occurring on Q2, where we would expect to have the same 0.2 voltage drop. That's all for now. I do hope you found this 60-year-old technology interesting, and I do hope that it was educational explaining some of the differences between the germanium and the silicon transistors.